Good morning, folks. I have had a good breakfast. And usually I do this before I have breakfast. But this morning, that's what I had breakfast first. And I put the butter up too hot. And I almost burned my breakfast. And I guess the lesson is, once butter gets too hot, you might as well toss it. Okay. Um, I don't understand this phone of mine, this camera phone. I do know they updated it a couple of times this last week as far as software updates. The rain. Come lay down. You want to come up? Come on down. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. She's been on guard a little bit more than usual. We've had some partiers next door. My neighbor, he doesn't look 80. It's still kind of babyish. He's just celebrated his 80th birthday. And uh, had the family out there. And I showed up because I wanted a piece of birthday cake, right? No, they ate the gelato at whatever it was, the gelateria at the store. They said, we knew we should have brought some home. I'm like, I was kind of disappointed, but that's okay. I got a problem with my insulin resistance and sugar anyway. So um, at least I'm onto it now. My personal trainer, Lance, is, he really is a genius. I mean, you know, I know, you know, you think he's just a muscle head, but... And they get the doctorate and rest on his laurels so he could have the credential. But he actually is, he's actually well read and continues reading. And he corrects me on things and, and he's pretty mild about it actually. I think he probably could, could do a little bit more on that at times. But what are old friends for? I got into the butter again. This is the third day in a row and I got one more serving. <sighs> which means more butter and I'll be tired of butter after tomorrow so I'll give myself a break on it. The blueberries are small and they're more flavorful than the strawberries right now. I got my hearing aids in and I also had an adjustment done to the right hearing aid. It helps me, it makes things more intelligible. I was really being left out in the dark, out in the cold. I, I just couldn't understand more than half the time what people were saying. And she'll cry and do things, and I can't hear her quite that well. I think I hear something, but I'm not sure about it. So have I made progress? Yes. I think I lost some progress, too. So I don't know where I'm at. Tomorrow, I'm going to get a tearing test. So, um, see what's going on with that. Um, I'm afraid that I may end up with... <clears throat> I want to die with as many original parts as possible, and I'm afraid I may end up having this, have some sort of radical thing done so I can hear. But hearing is that important to me, and at this age, there's no way I'm going to learn sign language and how to read lips and do all that stuff. So I want to be able to hear the subtle differences like I once could. And my ears feel strange. It feels kind of waxy in the right ear. I'm thinking that maybe I just need to go on a good fast for five days or something and let my body fix itself, let it heal itself. I don't know if that'll work, but I think that's what I'm going to be trying because I'm going to get on the road and I'm not going to really want to be stopping that much except to rest. And I don't want to be eating junk food in the restaurants. And I don't, I don't know if I'm going to really feel like cooking much for myself. I let my hair grow longer and my beard grow longer so that we could get a hair sample and give that to the state police lab, but I realized they don't give a shit. They don't care about violence against men. They just don't care. And the sad thing about it is that if they cared about that, the violence against everybody, including women and children, would probably drop in half. Now, I think it's worth being a little kinder and gentler to men just so everybody else is treated better too. I, mean, I don't know about you, but I think any improvement we can make in the system, any kind of a system strategy, system strategic intervention that we can make that improves a lot for everybody, that's good. But we have this political agenda where we have to make sure that men are bad because you know, Adam sinned, he screwed up, Adam, Eve was perfect, she didn't do anything wrong. Eve did it, man, I'm 
sorry, that's just the way it is. Women won't accept responsibility. They're allergic to it. And these jackasses in D.C., in case you're wondering, they don't worship Yahweh. Not at all. Who is their God? Come on, man. It's becoming readily apparent. Their God is the God of war. That's right. Doesn't matter if it's a rhino or a swamp creature. Their God is the God of war. They haven't seen a, a country they weren't willing to bomb yet. They haven't seen a war they weren't willing to wage yet. They stick their nose in other people's businesses and they blow the crap out of them. I think we have to take this government apart completely. And we need to restore our, our republic at the level of counties. And people are starting to wake up to those facts. And that is exactly what Thomas Jefferson proposed. He says, if you lose the republic, you get it back by going county to county. You take the county over. You say, hey, if you don't abide by the Constitution, we're not letting you in. And if you think it can't be done, then look to Jones County, Mississippi. Now, I know the leader <coughs> wasn't exactly the epitome of a, of a specimen of humanity. Uh, okay. But he did have the right stuff. And he said, we're not letting them in. We won't let you in. And if you try to come in, we'll kill you. And that's exactly what they did. And as a result, Jones County, Mississippi was preserved. They didn't have that rape, pillage, ruin, you know, steal the chickens, steal everything, you know, burn the fields, burn the barns, all that. That didn't happen in Jones County like it did the rest of the South. I think there's a lesson to be learned by that. If I see you and you got Jones County on your plates, because Mississippi I always lists the county you're from, there's 83 counties in Mississippi. Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that. I lived there for a little while actually come to like the place and love the people and uh, they love me back i mean it was kind of wild i am going to go back i am going to visit i may end up taking up residence there once again and doing some work i just don't know what the hell i'm going to do yet i can't uh hear well enough to work that sucks i can't uh i can't get by on my current uh, retirement checks because th those are being robbed by the robber barons and I know you think that uh, it's a good idea to uh, to give away money and, uh, oh, we're going to repay your student loans for you. We're going to forgive that. And, of course, it doesn't filter across the whole thing. It means that the money that you and I have in our retirements are worth that much less. Lay down. Lay down. I know you're a good girl. I see the tail wagging. Yes. What did I say? You know I said something, right? Got to do that circle once around real full and then get her place. Some things in the Bible are meant to challenge us by being contradictory seemingly contradictory and what i'm going to point out right now I'm, I'm tossing this challenge out there and i don't do this lightly but i want to point out the fact that we associate red with esau with edom which means red and with the communists and we also associate them with we think that the Democratic Party should be red because they're the Communist Party. Well, it turns out it was the Republican Party that destroyed the Republic. And so they get the bloody red color and they aligned with the British. They let the British take us over even more deeply. Yeah, the British own us today. They run us. We're underneath the king, their king. And in case you're wondering, it's not the King England, man. He's the King of Babylon. I know it's a little stretch for you, but you got to get used to it. And what's the symbol for their new King Charles, whatever the hell he is, the second or something like that? I think he's the second King Charles. The first King Charles gave the Kensal land grant on the Great Bay in New Hampshire. From, <laughs> from my reading, anyway. I wasn't alive back then in 1649. 
red hair. Esau came out hairy and red, hair all over his body. Okay, and red hair. Redheads out there pay, pay attention to this stuff quite seriously. Now, the red hair, people got kinky hair. Who else has kinky hair? Well, we know the orangutans do. I tease them mercilessly about being orangutans. Because what the heck? I mean, why not? It's just fun to do it. But then I like to tease them about that kinky hair. It comes from your African relatives down south, baby. <laughs> they don't like that one much at all. But it's like, we don't know. And there was one of the redhead in history that was very, very famous and very instrumental. You see, if it wasn't for him, you and I would not be alive today. That's right. He saved us. He saved us from the evil ones that were hunting us down way back then. And that was Uncle Shem. Shem, as, as in Semite, Semitic peoples. Yeah. Shem was a red hair. He had that kinky hair and he wore it long because he's a pretty proud warrior. He didn't just have a long beard like most of the <clears throat> Hebrews did. He had long hair too. And of course, the monument to him today stands in Egypt, the Sphinx. There's another monument there at the boundary going into Egypt, which Shem put up and says, went to Egypt, found every evil, conquered. So the basic message was, he found everything evil possible in Egypt, and he kicked ass. If it wasn't for him, Canaan would have killed the rest of us, would have killed us all. That's how bad it was. And right now, Canaan, Cain is busy setting us up to kill more of us. I figure that in the last century, the descendants of Cain got, I, I think the record books will show 100 million, but I think it really was 200 million in the last century. That's just my guesstimate. This century, we've already busted past 1 billion. They control the airwaves and the media, so you and I don't get to hear about that, except from some rare individuals that will open their mouths once in a while, like the, the nurse in Nova Scotia, that beautiful woman, that beautiful young woman who said that they had taken a billion of us out. And I hope her husband's protecting her because she needs some protection. So Esau red, red hair, orangutans, negroids. Yeah. I also like to tease one of my friends who's a redhead about we need to get a beanie cap for him because he'd make a good Muslim. But of course, the problem is that that Muslim dude that went AWOL for a year was out of Fort Richardson, Alaska. So, I mean, people in Alaska are pretty upset about that because it's a bad reflection on the state. And, and Alaskans, for the most part, especially natives, are really proud about their service. I mean, they they mean business out there. They made the, some of the best scouts, and they mean they mean it. I'm not sure if we're gonna see any good come about these days. People seem to be missing the boat because they don't read the Bible enough. If they read the Bible more, they would actually get queued up as to the key words that would indicate as to what's going on around them, but they're, they're, they're devoid of that, so they don't get it. But this MAGA movement is bullshit. A man or a group of men are unable completely to make America or any other shithole great again. That's right. Men can't do it. And here you are worshiping some jackass, some chump. Because he can do it. He can make it great again. And you don't have to do jack shit. You don't have to do a damn thing. You have to lift a finger. They'll 
do it all for you. And he's controlled by the same jackass as the control of the other party. Ain't no difference. Yeah, I know. I know. I'd rather see him in there than the courage jackass for sure. But you need to know something. They're both being handled. They both got Jewish handlers. They got Kazarian Mafia handlers. Which is why when I announced winning for president, I made the joke. I had to get a Jewish handler because that was the American tradition. As an American president, you have to have a Jewish handler. So I asked my Sephardic friend. Really brilliant. She said yes. We haven't talked in quite a while. I think she's just way too busy. It's a brainy woman. She's She applies her mind to some concepts and stuff. I send her some of the science and the studies, so, and I tell her, you know, read this for me. Tell me what it's about. She is able to pull out perspectives that evade the average person, evade me anyway. And I'm not average to begin with. I know, I'm just a weirdo, right? I'm just brilliant? Nah. I was one of the dull knives when I was growing up. I just kept at it. I had tenacity. I wasn't giving up. They told me that my life was over. It was useless. I'm never going to do anything. and they never going to amount to anything. And I said, hey, F you, man. We're going to go somewhere. I'm going to do something. I'm fighting this. And I fought. And I fought hard. And I ran across some men in my path that helped me tremendously. Now, they were worried about me. They were. I was dead bones honest with them. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be good. I didn't want to be bad at it. I, I wanted success. And they dragged it, my training out like you would not believe. So as a result, I am one of the sharper knives in the box. Am I really sharp? Oh, heck no. These other folks are much more brilliant than I am. But I ain't serving the bales or the Moloch's. No, like my legs. I hate that when she does that. Lorraine, kennel. Life is a grand adventure. And you only get one shot. You don't get two. You to get a chance to learn stuff and then live it. You got to do it on the fly by the Cedar Plants Live. And if you're out there and you're having troubles, stick with it. If you need to back off of something, go open the Bible up and read that. See if it has anything to say particularly to you about that situation. And who knows, there might be somebody who walked by and drops you a little hint. You don't even know. But that baby is the spirit. That stuff permeates everything. You got to be careful, though, because the bad guys, they're right there, too. My head feels very thick. I'm not hearing very well. The hearing aid adjustment, he had to pop it up 17 decibels, I think he said, which is pretty damn massive. And things became more intelligible. And I don't want to stay up at that level too long because that was a good ear. That was my good ear, actually. It's interesting how perspectives change as we get down the road. It, it's interesting. I need you to read the Bible. I need you to have a more flexible mind because you're not getting out of it what you should get. You need to understand you're reading a book that's written on three or four levels easily. So you've got different things to look at, different things to consider, and you need to develop some flexibility. At least you do what I do, and as Lewis said, paint yourself into a corner. Narcissism, being a know-it-all, thinking you understand things when you don't know squat. And I love it when somebody that's very simple-minded says something very simple that's profound and just rocks my world and go, wow, that's right. That's so simple. Why couldn't I see it? 
I'd like to say my education ain't hurt me none, but you gotta understand something. The more high you go up in education, the more your mind is screwed up. They track me all the time. They want me to fill out all kinds of uh, surveys and stuff. I don't want anything to do with them anymore. You know, I don't like them much. It's kind of like uh, turning a half a dozen Oscars back into Hollywood saying, you don't want anything to do with those people, which I admire immensely. But I got no, no, no Oscars. I do want to work. I don't know about taking another license out, but we'll see if I can work. We'll see if it. It's going to require me to, to go woke or go broke, whatever. I'm going to go in there with the board. I'm going to go. They'll want me to pay the fees before I even show up, which sort of is a pisser. And if I do that, when I walk in that room and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, I'm going to be fighting, fighting mad, and I'm going to be chewing their asses out and ripping them a new one because it's real simple. If they are going to practice such horrible practices, I'm calling them out on it. I'm making the public aware of it. They're going to get their asses sued from here to kingdom come. And hopefully the state pulls their charter. That's what should happen to all these medical boards. The state should pull the charter of the medical boards. You don't go after one stinking freaking license. You go after the entire class of jackass genocidus. Or the entire class of woke people that are hurting your children. I can't believe they're doing that in Mississippi. So I get to lock in as an outsider. And of course, I outrank them. Yeah, I do. I, I'm a retired psychologist. Okay. And I'm Yahweh's man too on top of that. So I get to go in there dressed to the nines. Shoes polished. Doing my best to not cuss. And uh, I guess I should hang out in Mississippi for a while. So I get my... Uh, my blessing capacity up you know they in mississippi they they bless you out yeah they bless you out they say stuff right to your face it runs circles around you and they're basically telling you what a fool and an idiot you are right to your face but they do it in a way that it goes down nicely <laughs> so you think they're being sweet to you and they're not and it's always the cutest girl who's doing it to you by the way oh my lord she wouldn't hurt a fly but here she is filleting your ego right there for everybody to see and just cutting you right down to size. You think you're so big and such a hot shot. I know. They, I like strong women. They're strong. And Mississippi has produced more Miss Americas than any other state. For good reason. That's not to say they're all beautiful, but that's to say there's, there's a variety. There's a lot there. And they produce some of the most beautiful, elegant women in the world. I was flooded with so many ideas the last 24 hours as to what to say and what to present to you. And I'm drawing up blanks at this point. So we're going to be calling this a bit short today. The sun is coming up. I, the outline of the pine tree is nice and dark. I mean, the street lights are still on. The sky is bluish and white. And there was a bit of a breeze. Um, I'm getting ready to, to run, man. I'm getting ready to drive down the road and um, still working on the repairs of the coach I don't know how things are going to lay out I just know that the spirit seems to be working with me right now it seems like things are lining up quite nicely for me so I need some more of that for sure um, I don't know where I'm going to go I don't know where I'm going to end up uh, I got to come back early so I really can't afford to run all over the place and burn all that fuel. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. But um, it'll be me and my puppy dog. Still sorting bugs out in the coach. It says I got 20% of water capacity left, but yet it's not giving me much water. So something's wrong. I got to sort this out. And the sun's coming up so I can get up without disturbing my neighbors too much and I'm gonna top that water tank off I gotta drop my black water and I gotta flush that that gray water right out too because that gray water tank is pretty much full that 
sensor and that tank seems to be accurate and then I got to disconnect everything again <clears throat> and get ready because when they tell me to to pop across town and get that emergency you know parking brake put in I'm, I'm gonna just go and do it <clears throat> hopefully it doesn't uh well hopefully it happens today honestly I'm still waiting on some mail to get delivered and my mail has been screwed up I may have to go without it but I'd rather be here and get it because I got two packages coming with medical supplies very urgent medical supplies no I don't trust the medical establishment I had ordered my medicines from overseas because the local jackasses are too busy genociding us and collecting big checks to do it <clears throat> they should have their charters yanked and the other one this is coming from a sister who's actually found something that might be able to get my ears going a little faster and better. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that tremendously. Should have been here already, but who knows. Um, they may have forwarded stuff up to Alaska on the forward. <clears throat> they shouldn't have because I, I sent it to the manager. The manager will receive it for me. But the mail is not dependable you used to be able to depend upon it but not anymore not anymore i'm nice and tired right now so i'm gonna sign off uh, thanks for hanging out with me this morning who makes america great donald john trump can't you understand how ridiculous this is for you to worship that man as if he's going to make America great again? And MAGA. Does that not sound like Magi? What do you know about the Magi? Well, there are Magi in the Bible. You need to know about the Magi. And I know we all want to point the fingers point at the international bankers and the bankers for screwing up our, our fiscal policies and all that but the real big bad culprits behind the scenes are involved in sorceries pharmacopoeia and the bible tells us clearly about that and so the two biggest financial institutions operating on the planet today aren't banks they're big pharma they're calling the shots much more than you realize. Much, much more. The Bible says sorceries. Pharmaco pharmacia, pharmacopoeia. Why do you not avail yourself of the cues that it gives you the tips? It tells you also about those who say they're Jews and are not. It's not every Jew. It's those who say they are and they're not. Tells you they're the synagogue of Satan. And we got people worshiping them because they want the blessing. Wow. And then we have the Assyrian again. Jerry Wiki says the Assyrians are going to give us more trouble. And I'm not so sure about the origins of the Assyrians. So I will be doing a little bit of research on that. I do know as far as myself goes, you know, I am mostly from the Nathali. So that's where I'm from. And of course, I got the key characteristics of it. And uh, that's my story. I'm going to stick to it. May Yahweh bless you today. May you bless Yahweh. Open that book up and give yourself that blessing. Just a little bit of time away from your busy day. Just might give you that, that one tip you need to make that day of yours go on much better. Yeah, we're living in the present. We don't live in the past. And we're not living in the future. It hasn't arrived yet. So work on that Holy Spirit present tense. So you're actually living it. It's not a bad way to go. 
Yahweh bless.